My name is Marcia Davis. I'm the hatchery manager. Welcome to the King and Queen Fish Hatchery. Our hatchery was built in 1937. We're located in King and Queen County, Virginia, and we're a warm water hatchery. The types of fish that you can find at our warm water hatchery are two strains of striped bass, bluegill, red ear, fathead minnows, black crappie, walleye, and sogeye. We have four full-time employees, which consists of two fish culturists, one assistant manager, and the manager, and we have two seasonal culturists that work between February and August. We stock fish all over the state of Virginia. We've stocked in over 200 locations in Virginia. It's a rare county where we haven't stocked fish. When we roll in the springtime, uh, you know, it's seven days a week, sun up to sundown and beyond. I say beyond because all of the fish that we stock into our production ponds, whether they be walleye, sawgye, or striped bass, we do after sundown. They're very, very sensitive to the sun, and so we stock our ponds after dark. My name is Chris Dahlum, and uh, I've managed this facility for 29 years and just about ready to retire. So starting about this time of year, mid-February, we try to get our uh, water treatment systems up and running, uh, particularly the recirculating aquaculture systems because that's what we use to spawn the striped bass in. It takes about a month to grow the bacteria that is needed to help keep the water quality parameters where we need them in that striped bass system. Before the stripers get here and as those bacteria are starting to grow, we deal with walleye and or sawgye, and that's about the beginning of March. The first week of April, we're out fishing for those mama and papa striped bass. Also in April, we would have to collect our red deer sunfish broodfish. Once we start harvesting the marine striped bass, we immediately flip those ponds and can come back at them with bluegill or fathead minnow, which is typical. The brood stock that we use for our striped bass program come from the Mattapanai, some years the Pamunkey, and other years from the James River. For walleye, the brood stock are captured closer to Brookneal, Virginia, from the Staunton River and the New River. Our red ear and our bluegill and our black crappie come from reservoirs that our biologists manage. When you come into our hatchery, you ride through and see our first pond, which is our only clay-based pond, and then you see all of our renovated ponds. There are 12 ponds before you get to our spawning buildings, and then we have another six ponds at the west end of our hatchery. These ponds are used to produce as many as four crops a year. Uh, didn't used to be the case. When I first came here, they were earthen ponds. 2004 through six, we had the major renovations, and that enabled us to really move fast on most of the aspects. Harvesting a pond, for example, might take a, a week process. Now it's a day process. We have three different large ponds, but we call them lakes that feed our hatchery. Spring Branch Pond, Walker Coleman Pond, and Ice House Pond. We fill all of our hatchery ponds with water from the Walker Coleman Pond. The water is pulled through a rotating drum filter and the speed of the water through the filter determines how quickly the hatchery ponds fill. That's why we call this drum filter the heart of our hatchery. So besides raising game fish, we've been involved in fish restoration. Both of our buildings are named after restoration projects that we did, one that was successful for marine striped bass and the other for American shad. The striped bass restoration project uh, that existed in Virginia was done primarily out of King and Queen Fish Hatchery in cooperation with um, Harrison Lake National Fish Hatchery, which is a federal facility. It was very successful. Essentially the hatchery and the department put themselves out of business because the restoration did so well. Every year we have what we call the catfish rodeo, which is basically a large shipment of catfish that comes into Virginia and gets distributed to nine trucks or so every week for about three weeks in a row. They purchase about 100,000 catfish and distribute them throughout the state. We get the question all the time, why don't you raise catfish on your own? It's because at this latitude, it takes two years to raise a catfish to the size that is big enough so it won't be immediately consumed by other predators when it goes to its final destination. We love to have groups here between April and July to come tour the facility. We just prefer a phone call first so that we can prepare for your visit. 
We've even had some kindergarten school groups that have had an awful lot of fun. It's challenging to have to raise multiple kinds of fish every year, and it's different from year to year. We may get requisitions this year for some types of fish, and then next year you get requisitions for a different type of fish. But the great thing about it is it's diverse. The diversity of it, every species has little tweaks and little things that have to be done differently. And then there's the occasional walk down to the building to check see if your eggs are locked up or if the system is running right at, you know, midnight or if the mamas and papas striped bass have spawned and you've got a basket full of eggs that you need transferred out of that system and into another. There's never a dull moment at the King and Queen Fish Hatchery. That's for sure.